Hey team, today we're going to talk about Postman. We're going to talk about what it is and how you can use it to test your APIs. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe for future updates. Postman coins itself as a collaboration platform for API development. But what it lets us do is play with APIs, test them, and even design new ones. Today we're going to specifically walk through how you can use it as an API client. This way you can know what you're working with a little easier anytime you use an API. So to get started, the first thing you want to do is go to postman.com and actually download the client. And when you first open the app, you're going to notice this launch pad where it's going to give you a bunch of different options. There are a few concepts we'll want to know. We'll want to know requests, which those are the actual API requests, collections, which is a group of requests, and there's a few others like environment and how to create an API, but we're going to stick with the first two for now. And we're going to get started right away with the Pokemon API. Similar to the UI, if you hit submit here, you can actually see the request. So we're going to use that same request and try to make it in Postman. So let's start off by creating a first request. At the top left, you see this big orange button that says new. Click that and let's click request. Here, let's give it a name. Let's call it Pokemon Squirtle. And then here, you're going to actually need a collection. Now we'll get into the specifics about collections in a second here, but let's just click it and say my favorite Pokemon. Once you hit the check mark, you can save it. You'll notice the first time you open up a new request, a few things. So particularly what we're interested in is the type of request. Now this could be a bunch of different types of HTTP requests, but we're gonna stick with get the get for now. And then the URL, which will be our endpoint for the Pokemon URL. I'm gonna go ahead and post in that Pokemon URL, and then I can hit send, and we made our first get request. Now in addition to the body, which has all of our data, we have a few other things. Like we have status, which is 200, which means it was successful. We have the time, which was 98 milliseconds, which is just how long it took to make the request, and the size of it, which it ended up being a little over 205 kilobytes. So now we have our successful request, but say we wanted to create a collection from scratch. Let's go back up to our big orange button, click new. This time, let's click collection. This time for the collection name, we're gonna call it Pokey API. Then we can hit create. Now, as you can see, it has zero requests because we just created it. One thing we also want to do is maybe create a folder. That way we can organize a little bit better. So we click these three dots, go to add folder, and let's call this Pokemon. And click create. With that Pokemon folder, we're trying to kind of recreate the contents of the different API endpoints that they provide, where Pokemon is a top level one. Now inside of that folder, let's actually create a request. So the three dots, click add request, and let's try to actually use the Pokemon endpoint. So we're using the Pokemon endpoint inside of the Pokemon group. So our request name will be Pokemon, then you can hit save, then you can actually select a request, and we have our new tab. Here we're gonna actually use the same request as we did before. So I'm gonna paste that in and still keep our get, and then hit send. And we still have our successful request. But there are other endpoints in this group. Say we wanted to also include abilities. Let's go back to our folder and under Pokemon, let's add a new request and let's call that abilities. We click save and after selecting the abilities request we can grab that endpoint and we can paste it in but before we do that we actually need an id so let's go back to our pokemon request and we can look under the abilities array for the ability that we want to request so here let's grab rain dish so i'm going to copy that request i'm going to go back to abilities and i'm going to paste that in now if i click send have a successful request, but this time it shows the abilities. Now you can apply the same concept for the entire Pokey API, or really any API. If I wanted to, I could go through and create one for characteristics, egg groups, genders, really anything. That way we can have our entire collection of Pokey API ready available for us in Postman. So now we're gonna switch gears a little bit. The requests that I showed you all before were get requests, but a lot of times you wanna post data so that you can actually send data. So we're gonna use this Yoda endpoint from funtranslations.com, which allows us to pass in text which will translate it to Yoda. So back in Postman, let's click create new and let's create a collection. Let's call this translations, click create. Then here, let's add a new request. Let's call it Yoda, click save. And let's go ahead and open that up and now we're ready to go. Now let's copy that endpoint URL. Let's post it into our request URL space. But this time let's change the get to post. And if we go ahead and click send, you can see that we actually get a bad request. If you look in the documentation, it still requires that text parameter, so let's add that. In Postman, we can click body. Here, we want to actually click raw, and then instead of text, let's click JSON. Inside that block, we want to add a JSON object, and let's call it text. Then I'm going to paste it in. It's going to say, hello, I am learning to test APIs with Postman. And now if I click send, we see that we got a successful request. We have our translation. Force be with you, learning to test APIs with Postman, I am. So all those endpoints that we worked with so far were public APIs, meaning they don't have any kind of authentication. 
But what if we need an access key? To test this out, we're going to use the Lord of the Rings API. Their requests all require what's called a bearer token, which is basically an API key. So to get started, the first thing you want to do is sign up. It's a free account, don't worry, uh, but then you can get your access token. And as soon as you log in, you'll be able to see your token. Mine's just crossed out here. So before we actually can use that token, we actually need to create a request. So click on Docs at the top, then once you scroll down, you can see all the different endpoints. Let's try to hit the movie endpoint, which will give a list of all the movies. In Postman, let's create a new collection. Let's call it Lord of the Rings API. Click Create. I'm also going to hit the drop down. I'm going to go and add a new folder. We'll call that Movies. I'm going to also click Create New Request under there. Let's call all movies. And save. Now back on the API website, we can grab the host name. Let's paste it into our request. Then we also want to grab the movie part, get rid of that dot with a period, and we'll have v1 slash movie. But now if we click send, we get a 401, which is unauthorized. We never added that token. What we can do is we can go to the authorization tab, and instead of inherit from parent, we're going to select bearer token. And here in the token slot, you can add that token from the API. And once you hit send again, we can see our successful request with all of our movies. Finally, what if we had a huge collection? We probably don't want to add that token into every single request. That way we would have to update it every time that changed. So instead, we're going to actually add it to the collection. To test this, let's first create a new folder. For this, I'm going to call it quotes, click create. And under quotes, I'm going to create a new request and call it all quotes. Inside all quotes, I'm going to paste the endpoint and then add quote and hit send. And we see it's unauthorized. So this time, let's actually go up to the collection, hit the three dots, and hit edit. Similar to the request, we have an authorization tab. So let's click that. And then for the type, again, we'll select bear token. And again, we can paste in our token. Now, once we update that, we can go over to authorization and see that it's already inheriting off from our parent. So now we can click send, and we can see it was an authorized request. Now we can go back to the all movies one. We can go to authorization. And instead of bear token, let's also switch that to inherit. And we can click send, and it's still successful. Similar to the Pokey API, you can apply this to all the endpoints. You can create different folders for each category and then have all of your API endpoints under each of those folders. So if you follow along with me, you should now be able to test your API in Postman. This is super helpful, whether it's testing, playing around. As a developer, it's really handy to be able to know what to expect from an API before you use it in an app. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.